Welcome to lecture 29, first order differential equations, how to integrate the differential, linear differential equations. So we're going to start with the simplest differential equations that are out there, first order linear differential equations, and the most general linear first order differential equation is going to take the following form. There's a function y of t we're going to solve, there are given functions q of t and r of t, and what we have is the first derivative dy of t by dt plus q of t times y of t equals r of t. Now, we call it linear because the y, even though it appears with derivatives, is only appearing linearly. There's never a y squared. There's never a y times a derivative. There's never a y cubed or a cosine of y or anything like that. y is only appearing as a derivative in a linear form, dy dt or in a linear form as a function itself as a y of t. It's first order because it only depends on one derivative, dy by dt. If it involves second derivatives, we call it second order, and so forth. When r of t is non-zero, we call it inhomogeneous, which means it is equal to some kind of function that is not zero. When r of t is equal to zero, we would call that the homogeneous equation. So the standard way to solve this is to start with the homogeneous equation, find all of the solutions of the homogeneous equation, which occurs when r is equal to 0, and then we add to that general homogeneous solution any particular solution we can find when the right-hand side is r of t. And you should be able to convince yourself that by doing that, we get the most general solution to this problem. So let's start with a homogeneous solution. We have the equation dy of t dt plus q of t y of t is equal to 0. And you can pretty much see what I want to do is I'm going to move the q of t y of t to the left-hand side. I'm going to divide by a y of t multiplied by a dt. And then I'm going to get it into a form where I can integrate it. So I'm going to get a dy over y equals q dt. And now I have to integrate both sides. So the integral of dy over y is just going to be log of y. And the integral of q of t, well, you've got to tell me what q is for me to do that. But I know that there's going to be some overall constant left on the other side as well. So we get this result, log y of t is equal to minus the integral or antiderivative of q of t plus some constant. Now, typically, the way that we like to do this is we say, well, we're going to start the equation at some time t0, and that's going to pin down what the constant is. So what we do is we write this as y of t is equal to y of t0 times the exponential from of the inter minus the integral from t0 to t dt prime q of t prime. What does that do? Well, you can see when t is equal to t0, that exponential factor the integral is equal to 0, so the exponential is equal to 1, and this object is equal to y of t0. It turns out that's the thing I'm going to have to supply to the first order differential equation in order to get its solution. But then for all t after that, this object will satisfy the differential equation. Okay, so we've gotten the solution to the homogeneous problem. Now we have to move on to the inhomogeneous problem. So we now bring back the r of t, and what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by what is called an integrating factor. It will look almost exactly like the thing that we just worked out. It's the exponential, the integral from t0 to t, dt prime, q of t prime. But notice it's with a plus sign, not with a minus sign. Now if I multiply that out, you can actually work out the derivative, d by dt of y of t times that exponential. You'll find it's equal to dy by dt times the exponential plus y of t times q of t times the exponential. And so it's just like I've multiplied that differential equation on the left-hand side by this exponential factor. Now on the right-hand side, I just get that r of t times that exponential factor. But you see, because it's a perfect derivative on the left-hand side, I can integrate that. And so when we integrate it, what we're going to get is we're going to get y of t exponential, the exponential factor of the integral of q of t, minus y of t0, that's what I get when I set t equal to t0, and that's going to equal the integral from t0 to t of the right-hand side, which is r of t prime exponential integral from t0 to t prime of the integral of dt double prime q of t double prime. Okay, you got to really be careful making sure you don't 
confuse the integration variables. Make sure that you always get those integration variables to be different. You sometimes have to change them from one formula to another to make sure that you know what are the integration variables that you're integrating over. Okay? So that's the one difficult thing to make sure that you manage when you're going through these kinds of things. Okay, now all we have to do is we have to solve for y of t. So I'm going to move the y of t zero to the right hand side. I'm going to multiply by the exponential factor with a minus sign times the integral and then what you find is you get y of t equals y of t zero times that, so that exponential factor with a minus sign plus the exponential factor with a minus sign times this integral that involved the r of t times the exponential with the plus sign. Okay, All of that gets put together and you notice the first term is precisely that homogeneous solution that we had before and the second term is the particular solution, the one particular solution that we said we needed to get in order to be able to completely solve this problem. Okay, that's it. That's the solution to the general differential equation. It's really a cookbook. You give me a Q of T and an R of T, you got to plug into these formulas and you can evaluate them. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. Uh, before we do that, I just want to note that the book explicitly goes through and shows you that the solution is unique and if you notice there is one constant y of t zero that has to be input we need to put that in in order to ensure that the results that we get are going to be starting from the correct starting point and so there's always a starting initial value that we have to put in when we're solving this differential equation. All right, so I'm going to keep on the top of the page for the next few pages when we're going through examples this explicit solution that we have for the differential equation that we are solving. And notice it involves the homogeneous and the particular solution. So we're going to try some examples. The first one we're going to try is dy dt plus 1 over 1 minus ty equals 1 minus t. We're going to restrict t between 0 and 1. And we're going to make y of t0 equals 0. So we're going to set t0 equals 0. We're going to set y at that value where y of 0 is going to equal 1. Okay. Well, you know, it's a cookbook. So let's first identify q of t. q of t is 1 over 1 minus t. So I have to integrate that. The integral becomes logarithm of 1 minus t0 over 1 minus t. But remember, t0 is equal to 0, so that becomes log of 1 over 1 minus t. I can just write that as minus log of 1 minus t. And now, we also have to do the integral with the r of t times this exponential of the integral of the q of t. So r of t was equal to 1 minus t prime, and the exponential of the integral of q of t is 1 over 1 minus t prime. And you can see those factors are going to cancel so I just get the integral from 0 to t of dt prime that's just equal to t so that integral is easy to work out and now we just plug everything together so I get now y of t0 is equal to 1 so I get 1 times the exponential of that integral the exponential uh, uh, minus the exponential of that integral minus uh, the exponential of minus that integral of the q is equal to 1 minus t. So I get 1 times 1 minus t. And then I get the that exponential factor, 1 minus t, gets multiplied by this integral that involved the r, which was just equal to t. So I just get this expression, 1 minus t plus 1 minus t times t. You can immediately recognize that's 1 minus t times 1 plus t, and that just equals 1 minus t squared. Okay, that's the solution of the problem. Now, whenever you get a solution like this, you really need to check it. So first thing we'll check is when t is equal to 0, that's equal to 1. That indeed checks. Next thing we need to check is the derivative. If I do a derivative of y with respect to t, I get minus 2t. If I plug into that differential equation, I get minus 2t plus y of t, which is 1 minus t squared, divided by 1 minus t. That's q of t. And... Because 1 minus t squared factorizes into 1 minus t times 1 plus t, I can write that as minus 2t plus 1 plus t. That becomes 1 minus t. And indeed, that's what r of t is. So it does check. So we've now solved our first equation using this cookbook. You can see that one of the real challenges is being able to actually evaluate all of these integrals. So in some cases, when you solve these problems, 
you're going to have to leave the solution in the form of an integral that you might not be able to actually evaluate. Of course, you can always evaluate it numerically if you had to. All right, let's look at another example. So this example is going to be dy by dt plus 2y equals e to the minus t. We're going to pick t0 equals 0, and we're going to pick y of t0 equals 0 to be 3. So once again, now q is just equal to 2. So the integral of that is very simple. It's just 2 times t, since t0 is equal to 0. Now, when I plug in the integral of r of t times that exponential, r of t is equal to e to the minus t, and the exponential is e to the 2t. And so that becomes the integral of e to the t. Uh, that just equals e to the t, and I have to evaluate it at the two limits between 0 and t. So I get e to the t minus 1. And now I'm ready to just plug in and get my solution. I get y of t. I plug in y of 0, which is equal to 3, times that exponential of the integral of minus q of t. That's e to the minus 2t. And then I add to it e to the minus 2t times that integral that involved the r, which we found was e to the t minus 1. Multiply everything out, and you find that you get 2 e to the minus 2t plus e to the minus t. So let's check this. When t is equal to 0, I get 2 plus 1. That's 3. That's indeed what I'm supposed to get. And now let's check the derivative. So if I take the, the derivative of this, I'm going to get minus 4 e to the minus 2t minus e to the minus t. Now our differential equation says take that derivative, subtract 2 times y. I mean add 2 times y. So I'm going to add 4 e to the minus 2t plus 2 e to the minus t. And you can see the e to the minus 2t factors are going to cancel. And I'm going to be one of the e to the minus t terms cancels. I'm left with e to the minus t. But indeed, that's what r is. So it does work. So we've now solved our second example. Let's move on to our third example. The third example is going to be dy by dt is equal to minus 2t times y. That whole thing is going to equal t. We're going to pick t0 equals 0 again, and y of t0 is going to equal 1. Okay, so q of t is easy to identify. It's just equal to minus 2t. The integral of that is easy to do. It's just equal to minus t squared. And that's because t0 is equal to 0. Now I can plug in and do the integral over the r. The r of t is equal to t. And the exponential is going to be a e to the minus t squared. So I have an integral of t prime e to the minus t prime squared. You can see that the derivative of that exponential is equal to minus 2t prime. And so t prime dt prime is going to be related to the derivative of the argument of the exponential. That means I can actually integrate that exponential. And I'm going to get a minus 1 half times e to the minus t squared evaluated, t prime squared, evaluated between 0 and t. So I get minus 1 half e to the minus t squared minus 1. That's what that integral is equal to. And now I'm ready to form y of t. Now y of 0 is equal to 1. So I take 1 times the exponential of minus the integral of q. So that's e to the t squared. And then I have to add e to the t squared times that integral with the r of t, which is a minus 1 half e to the minus t squared minus 1. Now I can start collecting terms. You see I get a 1 half e to the t squared plus a 1 e to the t squared. That gives me a 3 halves e to the t squared. And then I get a minus 1 half. So let's check once again. When t is equal to 0, that object is indeed equal to 1. Let's take its derivative. We find the derivative is equal to 3t e to the t squared. So we take that derivative, we subtract 2t times y. Well, 2t times y is going to be 3 e to the t squared minus 1. I have to multiply that by minus 2, I'm sorry, minus uh, 2 times y is equal to 3 e to the t squared minus 1. I have to multiply that by minus t. So I get a minus 3t e to the t squared plus t. Those exponential terms cancel, and I'm just left with t. But that's what r of t was equal to. So once again, it checks, and we get the correct answer to the solution for the differential equations. I hope you can see by now that there's really nothing challenging about this. You just have to be good at doing your integrals, and you just have to sit down and patiently work everything out. And as I said, sometimes the integrals won't work out as nicely as they do in these particular examples. They've been, these examples have been cooked up to make sure that the integrals work well for you. 
but you have this explicit answer. You just have to evaluate it. So it's really what we would call a plug and chug or a cookbook method to solve the differential equations. And you will find as you learn more about differential equations that nearly all solutions of differential equations fall into this kind of cookbook category. Okay, so let's summarize what we've got. We've gotten this explicit solution for all linear, first order, inhomogeneous or homogeneous differential equations. The method is a cookbook method that we have to use to solve all of them. Sometimes it's difficult to evaluate the actual integrals, so we might have to leave it in an integral form, but you could always then evaluate it numerically if you needed to. Uh, I don't know about you, but I find it pretty remarkable that every first order linear differential equation can be solved and we can write down the explicit solution. That's pretty remarkable. We're going to next examine the nonlinear first order differential equations. These are a lot harder. We only know how to solve five special cases of those nonlinear differential equations. It's still going to be the same cookbook style. We're going to formulate exactly what the procedure is that you use to solve them. But once again, the algebra is going to get even more painful that you have to deal with when you try and solve these particular equations. And that's what we're going to be covering in the next lecture. And that's all that we have today for this topic.